Um, so when you have a couple, you might want to make a few how might we statements. Maybe there's, you know, a few insights that are really speaking to you um, that you've pulled out from your research. Um, you can craft a couple how might we statements to guide you and again sort of focus in on these key areas. Um, what you see here on the right is a bunch of ideas that similar to our uh, insights mapping or affinity diagramming exercise um, have been organized in the same way. So what we did to start is just write down one idea per sticky and just make a big old mess and dream big. Um, put on some music, write down all of the ideas, looking back to the research um, and our how might we statements. Um, and, you know, jotted down a bunch of these different solutions and then organized them and grouped them by like ideas. So the exercise that we did for insights mapping is one that will repeat for ideation as well. Um, it's really important to create this space for you all to, you know, work together, to think collectively, to ideate, to generate ideas before you start to hone in again in that same way that um, you know, predefining categories for insights can can maybe lead us to miss something really important. Um, the same same sort of methodology we want to adapt here and apply here as well to create that space for generative, you know, creative thinking, and then start to to narrow down and and look at some of the similarities across the ideas that that you will be coming up with as you you know dive into your research insights. Um, so we will come back to we will come back to this really soon because we want to share, um, you know, sort of our research insights, how we got to these ideas and sort of what's what's next. So a few important points to make on this front, um, something that often happens in interviews and especially in usability testing, maybe not as much in exploratory research, but it certainly can happen. Um, is that users might give you recommendations. They might say, oh, I really want to, you know, I really like video. I would love a video. And that's great information, right, to understand that maybe there is a preference for other types of learning outside of, you know, reading text, for example. Um, but this is just really to highlight that user recommendations should not be taken as solutions. What we really want to do when we get recommendations like that is really think about, well, why are they saying this? Why is this a preference and not just taking those recommendations at face value, right? Because there might actually be more nuance and more context um, underneath that recommendation of, you know, maybe wanting to absorb information in different ways, maybe through images, through, um, through video, and maybe there's a great solution that is waiting to be discovered if you're hearing this from a lot of folks that actually like some sort of visual um, you know would be would be really powerful in a specific context um, so create space for ideation there and don't just you know take those those recommendations at, at face value um you know we talked a lot at the beginnings um you know, beginning lessons around um, this research is really aimed to understand the root causes of the pain point, not the side effects. And I think a really great example from, from the discussion we were just having is, um, you know, finding information on the site or maybe looking at the design of a page. Maybe that's actually not the problem is how the information is laid out on the page. Maybe the root cause of the problem is that they, don't understand, right, to the point that was shared before, that there is even information out there that they could find to help them address this particular issue. Um, so really, again, sort of zooming out and making sure that as we approach solutioning, we really have that clear sense of like, what are the root causes of these pain points that we're aiming to address and not just the symptoms. Um, if you are in a space where you're working really collaboratively with some of your end users, it's always great to pull them into the ideation and prioritization process. Um, in addition to other folks in your organization, right, especially if you are, um, you know, creating research artifacts that you can share out and, you know, share with your team, here are some key insights that we learned. We want to bring everybody in to do this ideation. It can be another great way to Victoria's point earlier around gaining buy-in to invite folks into this process 
um, as long as you know everybody has that sort of foundational, here are the research insights that guide us as we dive into solutioning. Um, and this is, you know, another thing I think that's really important to keep in mind as designers and, and as the folks that are advocating for the individuals that we serve and that we're designing for. Um, oftentimes, you know, when we bring the perspective of end users, that's one perspective that joins a broader conversation. And then that might be, you know, a conversation with business goals or, um, you know, a mission or, or other, other pieces that, you know, get pulled into this bigger picture. Um, and so, you know, think of yourselves as advocates for, for the folks that you're designing for. And, and these sorts of ideation and solution opportunities are really a chance to advocate for them and, and bring these ideas into these other conversations in these spaces and say, you know, like, here are things we're thinking on and, and here's the impact that we know they can have. Um, it's unfortunately not always as easy as saying, you know, we did research, here's our idea, let's do it. Oftentimes you do have to make the case um, for why these solutions are so important and that, you know, bringing, bringing it back to the research and the insights is, is a really critical piece of this. Um, so the exercise, I won't spend too much time here because um, this is actually what Victoria and I are gonna demo, but once you get to the space where you have a bunch of ideas, you know, it's the same question, right? We diverge, we have all these great ideas and it's like, now what? Now, you know, how do we identify what to push forward on? Um, and there is, um, this is one way to do that. So this is a, this, we actually like to call it uh, impact instead of importance. This is a, a mural template um, that you all will see in your mural, mural boards. Um, but this is one way to place potential solutions on a matrix that helps you think through, again, those, some of those constraints. I'm sure everyone is working with some kind of constraints, but also really wanting to have the most impact. So once we generate all of these potential ideas and we know that they're really stemming from the needs that we've identified in the research, how do we choose what to push forward with? How do we choose what to prototype? Um, and test and try first. And so an impact feasibility matrix is one really great way to do that, um, where you can actually, it, it forces you to talk through some of the different aspects of actually bringing some of these ideas to life, but keeping them in mind in the context of, you know, what's really important to you as an organization, where can you make the most impact, um, while also acknowledging just some of the constraints that we all have to work with and sort of keep in mind as, as we dive into solutioning. Um, and this is another place where it's great if you do have, you know, engineers on the team, if you do have um, organizers or advocates or other folks you can bring into this process, this is another really great opportunity to make this a collaborative exercise um, as you talk about, um, you know, this impact and feasibility um, discussion. 